And my name is Jeff Byers. I'm from the University of Georgia. And I'm an ecologist. I study mostly population and community ecology, which, for those of you unfamiliar, ecology is basically the study of how organisms interact with the environment and with other species. And in particular, I, I usually work in marine systems. Um, so the project that I'm going to be doing here, well, by the way, one of the reasons I picked Chile is because uh, the University of Católica has a um, very well-known marine ecology faculty. I'm definitely the best in Latin America. And I have some very good colleagues there who I've met in the United States uh, who, when they were studying in graduate school, and they are here now. One of them is the director of the Marine Lab in Las Cruces. Um, so we have some very exciting projects to do together. Um, so I work on a lot of different areas. I work uh, on invasive species, non-native species. I also work a lot uh, with parasites, and that's the topic of the project that I proposed for Fulbright. Um, so first, just a bit about research. I'm not going to go into a lot of great detail, but I'd be happy to take questions. Um, this is the life cycle of a trematode parasite. They have these life cycles that sound like I'm making them up because they're so complex and crazy. Um, but uh, this particular trematode we work with uses three different hosts to complete its life cycle. So it will move from a snail in the first host into a crab, into a shorebird. And so obviously you can uh, engender many interesting questions studying this life cycle. Uh, and this is one of the systems we want to work on here in Chile. The one here in Chile involves not a snail as a host, but rather the Lapa, the uh, Fisorela. Uh, it's a very common uh, limpet species on the coast of Chile. Uh, and there's some very good places to study this, including in Las Cruces. Uh, I can't remember what slide was next. One of the things that we've been working on in my lab is understanding how parasites uh, affect the host, obviously, that they're infecting but then how those uh, uh, infections also percolate up to affect higher levels of the population and communities. So for example, we can look at how a parasite, in this case, has changed the color of the foot of the snail. So this is a parasitized snail and one that's not. We could put each of them in little individual compartments and measure their consumption rate of algae. And we find that parasitized snails typically eat about one third less than, than the ones that are healthy. So in turn, we can then go out and ask, well, how does that manifest itself in the community? And in fact, when we do that, we find there are differences in the algae that grow. Because they're being consumed less, different species can tolerate uh, lower levels of herbivory and they can grow better. So here's an example of where we looked uh, with healthy snails and parasitized snails. And you can see visibly the differences in the algal community that results from that. So that's an example where parasites Instead of just looking at what they're doing to the snail host, we're looking further to how they're affecting the larger community. Uh, and this is some pictures where we've done this in the United States. And uh, I'll also be teaching some. Uh, I've proposed a course of invasion ecology. Uh, fortunately, Chile doesn't have a lot of marine invasive species. There's a, maybe a dozen or so. Uh, but a lot of that is unknown because there's many species that aren't well documented. So uh, we'll be working on some of that. I'll probably be teaching this course mostly at the Marine Station in Las Cruces, but maybe a little bit also in Santiago. Uh, this is a picture of the Marine Station. It's very yeah. neat. If you haven't seen it before, you can uh, Google it on Etsy. Um, yeah, but it's been there for a long time. It's a very famous Marine Station. Juan Carlos Castillo was a marine ecologist, very famous at La Universidad Católica. And he did a very famous experiment uh, several decades ago at Etsy, uh, where he, they made a giant protected area. And they kept people from harvesting inside this area. And when they did that, they saw the community looked entirely different from everywhere else on the coast of Chile. And that was one of the first experiments to show everyone how overexploited the marine environment was in Chile. And so now the government here has set up, as a result of his studies, different protected areas in concert with the fishermen to protect certain areas and leave others open to fishing. Um, but the very instrumental place in the history of marine ecology. So it'll be very fun to be stationed there. Um, I listed just some of the interactions I'll have. Um, Sergio Navarrete, he's the director of the Marine Station, and Jose Farina here in, um, in Católica, and in Santiago Pablo Marquette, and Miriam Fernandez. And then a few other uh, institutes also where I have some colleagues who I'm hoping to go and visit and give lectures while I'm here. And that's it. So, thank you. Yes, sure. You can take about two or three minutes. Okay.
Come and visit. We'll have <laughs> so we'll eat seafood. Yes. You're aware that there's also a Fulbright student at Las Cruces. Oh, yeah, I heard that. What, what's, what's his or her name? Sarah Gonzalez. Yeah. Sarah Gonzalez. Yeah. And she is from where? Have to but she's from the U.S.? Yeah, yeah. a U.S. full rights student. He was also a student. Recently. For one year? Uh, there until until the end. Okay. Yeah, nine months. I think I heard that, but I, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that again. Sarah Gonzalez. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and do you remember like where she's from or anything? I'll find that out. It's a small place. Mason has a I just saw her last week. I should, yeah. I should, That's okay. Yeah. I'll find she's out. She's working on kelp ecology and like how it affects the ecosystem based on the removal rates and harvesting and also okay. doing like uh, sampling on the beaches to see. Maybe we can go into more details with that. Very good. Yeah. Okay. I will look for that. Yeah. It's an amazing facility. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. And, and there are, uh, it's really well known internationally too. A lot of people, when they go to Chile to go study marine ecology, they're like, oh, do you go to SM? So it's yeah. it's a very big place. Are you going to do like hands-on experiments there, or? I think so. Yeah, we're going to try to do some experiments uh, with the parasites there in the protected areas and outside to see how protection affects parasite status. Um, and there's some other projects too, but that's one of the ones we want to start with. Yeah. Yeah, so like one quick question. Was yeah. Like the first parasite you talked about, how much damage does a parasite do to the host? Um, well, so if it has a complex life cycle like that, it depends which host. So in the snails or the limpets, right. um, the typical effect is castration. So it's a very beautiful evolutionary strategy because it doesn't kill the host, but it converts, it converts the snail into a parasite production factory. Uh -huh. And so the snails stay alive or the limpets stay alive uh -huh. and they're producing parasites. Th this host um, probably doesn't even know it's infected. It gets these cysts inside them and they, the cysts last for many months. And then when uh, this one is consumed, the parasite becomes an adult, and again, this host probably doesn't even know it's infected um, because it's very small and it's living in the gut, making many eggs that are being deposited out in feces to come back. So, it depends where you are in the cycle. It also depends on the parasite. The trematodes don't have um, as large of effects as other parasites might, like nematodes or something like that. Yeah. Well, thank you all. <laughs>